Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome into another edition of the Computer America Show. Yes, it's Friday, and uh, we have a great show planned for you. In the first hour, Netgear is here. One minute until showtime. Talking about their new Around Town product. Uh, it's just uh, very, very cool. Uh, and uh, we're going to discuss some of the other things as well. The routers, of course. Hey, they're Netgear. Why not be t take advantage of that? And then in the second hour, we've got computer and technology news, and that's brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show as we begin two hours of Computer America right here, right now. Fifteen seconds. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. It's the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast to coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And it's Friday! <laughs> About time it got here. Yeah, I know. Uh, another week of broadcasting excellence in the repository. And uh, safely filed away for archiving and for future generations to yes. worship, uh, listen to, indexing. Yes, indexing, cross-referenced, compiled. Uh, uh, you know everything. <laughs> it's there, and uh, of course, all of it up at computeramerica.com, our website. We invite you to always visit computer. You know everything we do here at Computer America on the show uh, is reflected on our website at computeramerica.com. So if you, you know, you want to know what's coming up, our schedule, calendars, I mean, everything is there and uh, it's uh, automatic and we uh, uh, invite you to check it out. Uh, we had a couple little hiccups, but you know, that that's to be expected when you're doing something as complex as, a, as, as a revamping the website. And uh, we're still fine tuning, it, but for the most part, everything is up and working and 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 running smoothly. Um, and uh, but we invite you to do it now. Of course, it being Friday, that means we're going to have uh, our social media winner of the week. Mm -hmm. All uh, right. Yes, we're going to give away a Logitech T650 wireless glass touchpad valued at eighty dollars to some lucky person. And again. All you have to do is go to our website, ComputerAmerica.com, and just check out all of our social media links, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Pinterest. Just go to each one. Maybe the links are right there and just like it you know, or subscribe to it, and that's all you have to do, and that's it forever. You are in our drawing, and the more of them that you subscribe to or, or register with, uh, the more chances you have of winning something really, really nice here on the uh, show. And we got some great things. We love giving away prizes to our listeners. Nothing... Uh, uh, gives us a better thrill than you know awarding uh, somebody a prize uh, for them to play with, and uh, we've been doing this for I don't know for years, giving away prizes and, and oh, for the longest time, for the longest time. Yes, for the longest. And and, and of course, you know there, you know, uh, it, it engages you with with companies that help us provide the prize, lets us give away awesome prizes to people, and hey, it's a nice little reward for listening. Uh, we're very informative, but hey, no one ever turned down a free prize. No, never. <laughs> I don't think I've ever. Said, no, I don't want that. I don't want that uh, a prize. You know, give no. Uh, you know, we've I've run had, into like a couple things like, oh, well, you know, that only works for PCs. I'm a Mac user. Like we've run into those, but no one's ever said, oh, what? No, how dare you? Like that's never happened. Uh, we from time to time someone will win a prize and say, you know, I'm going to give it to my brother or I'm going to donate it to a charity, which is fine. I mean, yeah, that's, that's fine. We, we we that's that's perfectly. That's your prerogative. Your prize, you can do whatever you want to with it. Absolutely. Uh, now. 
If you have a comment or a question for us, be it in our second hour, which is going to be computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. Um, you, or if you have a question for a guest. See, that's one of the things that we do here on the show is we give you a unique opportunity to talk to uh, the movers and shakers in the uh, technology and computer industry, uh, an opportunity where you might not normally have. Uh, you can speak with them, ask questions, make comments, whatever. Uh, give us a call. It's 347-884-8881. 347-884-8881. I'll get you on and get you through. You can also join us in our live interactive chat room, too. Uh, we welcome you to join it. Uh, in the, uh, uh, on our homepage at ComputerAmerica.com, you'll see uh, in the pull-down menu, the second selection is the first one's home, and the other one is the show lounge uh, slash chat. You can just click on that, and it'll, you'll, see, uh, uh, you'll see the chat room. Uh, it'll say want to chat. If you hover over it, by the way, it'll give you the opportunity to select the full screen chat. You can do that too. Uh, but put in a username. That's the name you'll be known by when you're in there and uh, and you're you're in. We have a lot of people in there. Love to see you in the chat room and participate. The other thing about our show is, yes, we're a radio broadcast. And uh, however, um, you can also watch the Computer America show. We have live video streaming available when we're live and on the air. Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time. Um, just uh, right on that same show lounge, you it'll take you. You'll see the um, uh, video stream. It'll I believe it just starts up automatically if you want. It'll just uh, go on and start up, and you can watch us. And in many cases, you of course you can see me. You can see Ben. Sometimes you can see the guests, or you can see products. Uh, one of the things Ben has is the ability to display the products that we're talking about via the website. He can actually show and display any website, any web page. I can show the website, the video, the product itself, demonstrations, yeah. all that kind of thing. Unfortunately, uh, lately I've, I've been dedicating the uh, I've been dedicating the technology to play cat gifs throughout the show. <laughs> so uh, the website will not be available tonight. We'll be strictly watching adorable cat videos. What, what about was it, was it with the exploding kittens? That was .com or something. That sounds deadly. It was a game, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was a game. It was a game, exactly. It was a game. Although I liked the one with the, where they, the, the, there was a printer that was printing out little kittens. You know, I think how many kittens per minute were coming out? Like about 10 or 15. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you can watch all that at ComputerAmerica.com. Um, you, can, you can see them. There's a scrolling banner there as well. And you can see Ben's cherubic face uh, right on the, on the website as well. Uh, but the best thing, of course, if you want, just give us a call, 347-884-8881. Okay, so did I cover everything, Ben? Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Any good movies coming out this weekend? Yeah. Uh, no, no, none that I can think of. I'm, I'm sure there are. Hmm. Just none that are uh, hitting off the top of my head right now. Okay. Well, let's get to our guest. Uh, he's waiting patiently in the, uh, in the wings, and uh, we should bring him on. Uh, again, our guest tonight is Netgear. I'm very excited to have them on. They've been on the show. Netgear has been on the show dozens of times over the years, and uh, and always a pleasure having them on. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about something called Around Town. Now, at the beach or on the road, instantly, this device is gonna, can get you one gigabyte of high-speed internet connection with the Netgear Around Town mobile internet. Now, according to them, you can enjoy faster surfing. Well, yeah, with a gigabyte, yeah, absolutely. Streaming and gaming with the trusted Sprint nationwide high-speed network. And get this, no commitments or data expiration. How do they do that? Uh, this amazing little 4G LTE mobile hotspot gives you a powerful battery that lasts up to 10 hours. Uh, it lets you uh, securely connect up to 10 devices and provide a vivid LCD display to keep you informed of your data usage and network connectivity at a single glance. This is so cool. Now, here to tell us more about Around Town, as well as other Netgear products, is Oleg Fischel. Oleg is Netgear's Senior Product Line Manager. Oleg, welcome into Computer America. How are you, sir? Uh, very well, thank you, and uh, hello, Radio World. <laughs> it should be Radio World and Podcast World and Video World. I mean, we're, we're reaching so many places. 
people. And uh, and we're so glad to have you here uh, uh, tonight, Oleg. As I said, uh, I'm I'm upfront. I'm a huge fan of Netgear. Always have been, and uh, I think you guys make some amazing products. And so I'm always gratified to hear uh, when you have something new that we can come on and 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 talk about. Uh, and we're, we're going to kind of focus on on uh, this new product. But why don't you describe to our listeners? Uh, what exactly you mean or what Netgear means by a, a, a mobile hotspot? Sure, that's great. Well, uh, a lot of people are familiar, or I would say almost everyone at this point is familiar with the process of, of a Wi-Fi connection to the Internet. So right. people probably don't think about it too much, but when they go to Starbucks or the airport or even at home, they're connecting to a hotspot. Now, those things don't go anywhere. They're connected to a hard line to the Internet somewhere through a cable provider or somebody like that. Uh, a mobile hotspot is exactly that. It's a hotspot you could take around with you, and instead of being cabled into the wall or into a cable modem, it's connected to uh, the cellular network, essentially, like in Mark case Sprint, but or we also sell products for AT&T and Verizon and, uh, and other operators of that nature. So uh, a mobile hotspot is essentially just like any other type of a Wi-Fi connectivity device. It provides internet, it allows you to share over Wi-Fi, and uh, in this particular case, a mobile hotspot is a very convenient way to share internet with multiple people, multiple devices, and uh, it's dedicated battery and, and a dedicated connection that you don't uh, you don't have to worry about it taking away from other connections you may have. Right, and 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 we're going to get into this device now. There are a number of hotspots out there, um, including Netgear. I mean, you this is not the only one. I mean, you have other. Uh, you have uh, uh, something called AT and T Unite Express and Netgear Fuse Mobile and Mingle Mobile Hotspots and Zing. You have a whole yep. bunch of them, and uh, I, I, w I want to talk about what the difference of between these things are. And but I, I, uh, what I want to do first, I guess, is just uh, focus uh, a little bit more on why consumers need these devices. Why why do you do this? For the obvious, yeah, well, maybe reason. I can answer both questions at once. Okay. So so. Uh, Really, there's several different use cases where somebody might need a um, mobile internet connection. Mm -hmm. So first, it's the the most common one is you you picture in your head a road warrior, somebody who's constantly traveling who needs to be connected all the time. They can't rely on networks from hotels or airports or or restaurants or wherever. They mm -hmm. need to be they need to have their connection all the time, and they have lots of devices, and they may have meetings with multiple people. And they need a high-speed dedicated connection with them wherever they go all the time. Those people want contract. They want to know that you know they have all the data that they can get because they know they're regularly getting lots of – they're using lots of high-speed data. Mm -hmm. Those people will get what's called a post-paid contract from a mobile operator like Sprint or Verizon or AT&T. So they pay every month. They come with a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. And with that, you get some amount of data every month, whether it's 5 gig or 2 gig or 10 gig, whatever that is. Um, and uh, those people are perfectly happy paying however, or committing and paying uh, whatever that costs because A, they know they'll use it, and B, a vast majority of the time, they're not paying for it. Their company is paying for it. Uh, the second use case is what's called prepay. This is a, a, a person who has a specific use case. They know they're gonna need the internet for a period of time, so they have a device they will go to a Virgin Mobile or an AT&T Go or a Verizon prepay and they'll buy a plan and they know that whatever they don't use at the end of the month goes away. Or maybe they don't know and they're surprised to find out that at the end of the month, whatever they didn't use goes away. So maybe that'll happen the first time, but the second time, you know, they know, okay, this day is going to expire. So I have to only buy what I'm going to use mm -hmm. and I better be comfortable with that. Okay. And so re really those are, those are, Two use cases, uh, people who who have regular need for for mobile internet. There's a third use case, which is what what we're trying to go after, and that is people who use the internet sporadically on vacations, or you know they have you know their kid has a swim meet and they know they're going to be at the pool all day and they want to you know get on the internet every once in a while, or they're at a recital and they know that their kid's going to be on the stage for ten minutes and they're going to be there for three hours. So they want to, you know, fill up the remaining two hours and 50 minutes with something more entertaining. So uh, for those people who can't predict how often they're going to use the Internet, for people who know they need it occasionally, but they, they can't commit to anything, and they certainly don't want a plan of any kind, for those people, we have uh, Netgear around town. That's no commitment, no contract, uh, no expiration. You buy 
a gig of uh, you buy the device. It comes with a gigabyte of data, which never expires. Hmm. It runs on the nationwide high speed network from Sprint. And if you want more data, you can buy another gig, uh, which again doesn't expire. And it'll be there if you need it over the course of a week or a year, right? If you use it once every six months, no problem. It doesn't, it doesn't cost anything different and there's no limitation there. Uh, and then in addition to that, because obviously there's a little bit of cost associated with the data being, uh, you know, unexpiring, we also have a little bit more affordable plans, larger data buckets, which do expire for those people who want that as well. So let me get this straight. So in other words, I, I, when I buy or get in around town, it comes with a gig of data. Um, now, yes. so yes. I'm doing whatever I'm doing, and I, I, do I, I assume it gets some sort of warning and saying, hey, you're getting close to your, your limit, or this, when the gig gets used up, it cuts me off, or does it start, I mean, what, what happens if I exceed the gig uh, of limit? What, what, what happens? That's a very good question. So when you sign, the, the only thing you actually have to do to get the device going is you have to sign in with a email and password. Okay. And the email is so that, we can communicate with you when you're low on data. So what we do is we send you an email All right. uh, that says you're about to run out. So in in typical use case, we send you an email when you have like 10% left. Okay. I think, yeah, I think 10%. And then they, we tell you, you have, you know, you're about to run out of data. And if you need more data, buy more data here, et cetera. Uh, there's also something called smart alerts, which you can set uh, the device to connect are uh, to contact you via text, via uh, email, multiple addresses, and, and you can uh, find out more detail. So it can tell you when you're 50% done, when you're 20% done, hmm. and so it can keep you really uh, on top of your data usage. But in addition to that, on the device itself, it tells you how much data you've used. Right, because it has a display. It looks like a color display, a LCD display. Yes. Um, very, very nice, yes. built into this device. So. Uh, and that's live and active, so you can literally see at a moment uh, where, where, what you're doing. I mean, where, where you stand with everything. I assume you put the uh, you put the capacity. I mean, and and how much you have left on that is displayed on that screen. So today we uh, can only tell you how much you've used okay. to that point. All right. Uh, but within the next couple of months, we're going to update the software on the device. And even people who have the device today will, will get what we call a data usage bar. So it's essentially like a fuel gauge. Yeah. It tells you this is how much data you have, and this is how much data you have remaining. Or that's that you, how much slick. you purchased, and this is how much you have remaining. And uh, that's just purely because what we're doing is relatively new. Uh, we're the only, first of all, well, we could talk about what we're the only, but... Um, mm -hmm. So because we're kind of at the forefront of this technology right now, uh, all of this stuff is happening re in real time. So we're taking advantage of technology that's being rolled out by Sprint now. Mm -hmm. So it's actually not going to be available until next month, and we won't be able to get it to consumers for another month after that probably. Still, though, it's, this is really cutting-edge stuff, and uh, I love the idea of having like a like a, a gas fuel gauge or something on there. <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, it's sort of like uh, uh, it makes it more intuitive. You, know, you can just put quick glance and see how much data you have. Now, obviously, uh, it all depends what you're using for. If you're streaming live video, obviously, you're going to be using your data a lot more quickly than if you're, you know, just sending right. text back and forth. So, but that, that certainly, you know, the person who buys it knows what they're buying it for and what they're going to be using it for, and they need to adjust accordingly. Um, as they're watching their, their uh, data um, decrement, you know, and, and they're using and they're about 10% later, um, can they, they can buy this stuff pretty much on the fly and, 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 and then just continue on uh, uninterrupted? Correct, correct. Uh, they go to aroundtowninternet.com uh -huh. and they buy, you know, however much they want and they, Use it until that runs out. Now, if they go to that's that's one of the that's yeah. I'm sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, if you caught it around town and you're using it, you're uh, and you're and you're buying more stuff. Are you also decorating your data at the same time as you're buying more? I don't know. Just just, just uh, uh, it can't be that much. I would. No, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 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 relatively limited. It's very it's very minimal. Okay, exactly. So uh um so that so that the basically. In a nutshell, what makes around town different from other hotspots is is the the way you have it packaged and the way you're having you're having it delivered. Yeah, there's there's a couple things that make this different. Uh, first, we're the only um, equipment manufacturer, Netgear, uh, that that sells a mobile device. 
right huh. now uh, with with service. I mean, if you think about it, iPhone doesn't sell its service. Samsung doesn't sell its service. No, nobody really does this. No. Um, and and in a lot of cases, for good reason, because it's not easy. <laughs> it's not well, a straightforward way well, to uh, to sell a product. Yeah, you have to you have to do uh, you have to use tethering, right? You have to tether um, with your iPhone to make it a, a hotspot, and uh, and even then, that's uh, can be flaky at best. Yeah, and it's also very costly. Yeah, well, I uh, we. We could definitely talk about why that's not the greatest <laughs> solution to, to data um, access. Okay. But uh, so what what being an OEM, uh, an equipment manufacturer, allows us to do is we focus on selling people a device and making that device as useful to them as possible. And we've partnered with a company called Zoom Media Plus that helps us provide the data. Uh -huh. um, so they resell data from Sprint on our behalf. And because our primary business is selling hardware, we focus on selling hardware, and we try really, really hard to make that experience for people as positive as possible. So we looked at what are the barriers for people with today's offerings, and what people we, we went and asked a bunch of people, and what they told us uh, overwhelmingly was, we don't want another contract with a, a mobile operator, we don't want data that expires, and we don't want to make any commitment ahead of time for uh, using a certain amount of data. And so we went back and thought, well, how can we do this? How can we make this a possibility for people? Uh, how can we eliminate all of those barriers? And we realized there was no way for us to do that working with an existing operator. So we thought we're gonna, the only real way to, to do it uh, in the United States today is to create, essentially create our own network. And, and that's what we went and did so that we could provide really the, the lowest number of barriers for users. Okay. <laughs> so and uh, just real quick, because uh, if the the reason that the data expires uh, when you buy, let's say the two gigs or the five gigs, uh, is because why again? Uh, sorry. So there there's cost associated with um, with the forever data. I mean, it could get into the the to the um, nitty gritty, but but essentially, you know, we're buying data from from Sprint and. Okay. The longer we hold data for an account, the more we pay oh, for that data. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. It ages. <laughs> it yes. It becomes more which expensive. Is, okay. Which is actually the, the, the main business model for, for the, the mobile operators. They have a, a model called breakage, uh -huh. where they sell you more than they expect you to use. So when AT&T sells you 5 gig a month or Sprint sells you, you know, 8 gig a month, they expect that you're going to use less than that. And that's how they make money by by you buying more than what you use, and so they get you know they mm -hmm. obviously uh, profit on the difference. And what we found was a lot of people they might not be able to specifically point to okay that's breakage I don't like that, but there were a lot of people that felt like they were being taken advantage of because you know they were essentially being sold uh, something they that they weren't expected to use, mm -hmm. and if they did use it, in many cases they were treated like abusers. Right. If somebody regularly uses five, six gig on a five gig plan, mm. then maybe they get throttled or things of that nature. Oh, yeah. So um, there's this general feeling of unease. And that's why there's a huge cross section of the population that doesn't have a mobile hotspot. And so we again, we went and looked at what can we do to make this a, a, an attractive uh, proposition for people? Because we, we want we want people to have hotspots at the end of the day. That's that's all it is. If, if they need one gig in a year. We want them to have that gig. If they need fifty gigs a month, we want them to have those fifty gigs, and all with the same device, obviously. Yes. Okay. Exactly right. And uh, so the different models are basically different providers. Is that uh, are these uh, different uh, similar these hotspot devices that Netgear carries? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, we have uh, we have you mentioned the Unite Pro that's yeah. uh, sold on AT&T. There's also a Unite that's sold on AT&T. There's also a Unite that's sold on AT&T Go phone. Mm -hmm. There's a um, Virgin Mobile Mingle, okay. uh, which is essentially another version of the Around Town that's sold on Virgin Mobile, which is a Sprint company. And there's a version sold on Sprint, so et cetera, et cetera. We sell yeah. Yeah. Um, multiple versions per operator. So which is, uh, is there, is there f fair to ask which is the better? Or, I mean, are they all pretty much the same? Uh, or like for some reason, yeah. Or, or, or for some reason, would you like to match up? Like, like let's say you have uh, Sprint already as a mobile carrier. Would you want to match up your uh, your hotspot with your mobile uh, provider? 
Yeah, and also some of the screens look are bigger than others too. The hardware is a little different. Yes. So for if you look at the lineup as a whole, uh, we have our really high end devices that come out and have you know we have the Unite Pro has a big giant battery. It has a giant screen. Uh, it has a capability to do something called boost uh, boost charging mm. or jump boost. Okay, well, I should know the <laughs> market name that we call that, but it it, al it allows you to to charge your devices, uh, your other devices, your phones, your tablets from that battery. Mm -hmm. So there there are other features out there that uh, that make those maybe uh, more more feature rich. But at the end of the day, I think most people make their decision based on what operator works near their house based on who they feel comfortable with, and then based on their specific usage case. So even though the Unite Pro may be, um, by some measures, the best device, uh, it also comes with a two-year commitment, and that may make it just not feasible for certain people. I see. And so, with the and so we, we needed to make a product that was accessible, and Got so it. you know we couldn't sell an unsubsidized Unite Pro to people at an affordable price. Right. So around town basically is uh, really this technology for the masses for most people. Uh, it covers the broadest yes. the, the broadest demographic uh, uh, general users who want to be able to do what it is that you can do with a, with a, a mobile device like this and yet not be slammed uh, with cost or limitations. Uh, and and that's basically the, uh, the 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 major benefit of the around town version. Um, do you find uh, and and do you find that's 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 who's buying these the these are uh, oh that's going to be who's going to be buying around town is available now or is it going to be available? It's available now. It's been out for about a month now. Okay. Uh, primarily on ecom. Okay. All right. And who's buying it? So we're finding that we're we're essentially reaching our target audience. Uh, the single biggest issue today is that this is kind of a new model. Uh -huh. This is a new message. Uh -huh. And so we're, we're just trying to reach out and, and get the word out to more people. So that's, um, right. so we are reaching the people that we're, that, that we're hoping to reach, but we're just not reaching them in the volumes that we would like to. Well, well, you're here on this show. That's certainly going to help. I get the message out. Yes. Uh, um, so what are they using it for? Are people watching Netflix on this thing? What are they, are they using it? I mean, what, what, what are some of the uses that you find that people are, are using around town so far? I realize it's only about a month or so, but uh, what do you any patterns yeah, arising? So, so prior to prior to launching, we did a, a fairly extended beta test, and then um, after that, we did uh, quote friends and family, where we had where we opened up uh, early versions of the product to friends and family. So mm -hmm. we did get a lot of feedback early on how people use the device, and primarily it was exactly like what we anticipated. People would go on a trip. Mm -hmm or they would have an emergency situation that they didn't anticipate uh, and they would use the hotspot. So I'll just give a couple of examples. One, a, a person went on a road trip to uh, Oregon. Mm -hmm. from, um, I, I live in Southern California. So that was a really long drive. So they loaded up on data. They knew that they were gonna pretty much be done after a week. So they bought the five gig plan mm -hmm. and they knew they were gonna use it well within 60 days. So they bought that from us and and um, drove up the coast and the whole way they had the kids streaming videos and audio and they <laughs> used the maps in the front of the car mm. and they used Yelp to find local restaurants and gas stations and things of that nature. And then another use case, which I found was really, really interesting. And this is a coworker of mine. Uh, her daughter was at a, um, at a dance recital and she needed to go uh, to do, run an errand in the middle of the recital. Mm -hmm. So she left and she had to get have a way for her daughter to communicate with her and her daughter doesn't have a cell phone so she gave her her tablet and a hotspot and said if you need to call me then call me over skype yeah <laughs> and so she felt confident leaving uh and then the kid obviously had entertainment if they needed it and she was gone for a couple hours felt really confident that uh that she could contact her her daughter if necessary so you know i, I think as more and more people have these things in their hands, we're going to hear more and more stories like that one where there, there are use cases where you wouldn't come up with that use case unless you had the technology in your hand. Yeah. Uh, like the, the uh, really the, the big thing leaping to my mind is uh, really emergency internet where, you know, j just keep it because uh, let's say I, I'm using at t you buy, you know, either around town or you buy one of the other uh, hotspot providers from, from another cell carrier. 
just have them, uh, let's say, in your car, in your bag, wherever, and just have one in case you know your device does not have internet. Pull it out, and bam, you know you're off and running again. Just for those situations where you know, let's say you really need a Skype call, you really need uh, email for some reason, like it, it's just a good backup to have. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, thank you for, for making that point. So my, my wife, another another uh, beta tester, um, she uses it in the car. Uh, she has it typically off in a car in the same way that we used to have a cell phone off in the car yeah. where for emergency situations, you have like backup cell phone on a different network, right? Yeah. Just in case. Right. So we had like the basic bare minimum plan and we paid like $5 a month just in case. And so now she has this where she has like a gig uh, on the device and mm-hmm. If there's an emergency situation, if, you know, our primary plan is on AT&T, if there's no AT&T coverage, but there is Sprint coverage, then she has access right away. And that would be one reason to say not go with your current carrier. Right. Because, yeah. you know, you kind of split it up. No, it makes sense. Listen, the music means, uh, oh, like we're at the bottom of the hour. We're going to take a little break and then we're going to continue on. Uh, we're talking to Oleg Fischel. He is the uh, senior product line manager for Netgear. We're talking about around town. Lots more to talk about with them. We will be right back. Stay with us. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-866-663-MYTV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-866-663-MYTV right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HD TV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Disable the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule. Your company's getting ready for its IPO. And you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? (laughs) That's so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they're available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. I hope you're old enough for this next bit. It's Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. This time, the Elevate Grill. It's roughly the size and shape of a carry-on bag with a broad, flat face and a big square handle up top, but this case can pack a lot of heat because Elevate Grill is a folding, totable, two-burner gas grill. It uses propane in a bottle, the 16.4-ounce canister you may see on a torch used to solder pipes, for example. When you separate the handles and swing them down, they become support legs for the two flat grill sections that hinge down to horizontal. Behind their grates are square burners with a AAA cell-powered ignition spark gap on each. The gas bottle connects anew for each use and stows inside between uses, an arrangement enforced by a separate regulator connection designed to not travel well when it's connected. Each of the two grates is roughly a foot square, so if you're feeding one to six people, you may be able to cook it all in one pass. Bottom line, the Elevate Grill is a cool new way to make gas grilling a portable feast. Marty Winston with the News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. 
Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Uh, thanks for sticking with us through the break. We are talking to, oh, by the way, uh, that was Marty Winston with a news to Bulletin Review. Uh, you'll be getting a brand new one of those and, heck, even a brand new second one of those Monday. Very, very cool. But uh, here in the first hour, we are uh, continuing on with, with uh, Netgear. And uh, uh, Mr. Oleg Fischel is here. He is the uh, Senior Product Line Manager. And we're talking about these the, these mobile hotspots very very cool technology and you can do so many things about uh, you know you can do so many things with them that uh really uh, you know and, and we touched on it for a second there but we didn't get uh but we didn't really get into why you shouldn't be doing it but craig mentioned uh tethering earlier and i guess we should kind of explain you know why uh you know why one of these mobile hotspots are a better solution than just simply tethering that, yeah, that, that's a that's a great question, and a lot of people ask that. Um, lately, as we've been marketing more and more to people who would never consider a mobile hotspot, they say, "Well, why is it any different than using my phone to tether?" And there's a there's a few reasons. I mean, the primary one is that people just don't know how to do that. They don't know how to tether with their phone yeah. because the phone manufacturers don't make it super easy, and the mobile operators uh, make it even more opaque. But even beyond that, uh, at the end of the day, you have in your pocket when you carry around a smartphone a five, six, seven hundred dollar supercomputer, right? And when you turn it into a mobile hotspot, that phone turns into kind of a mediocre phone, an okay computer, and a fairly poor mobile hotspot. Mm -hmm. uh, you connect one device to it, it starts to get hot, you drain your battery, the processor starts to slow down because it's just not made for that. The Wi-Fi radio is not really meant to share the data. So uh, you kind of have a jack of all trades and uh, an expert of none. Yeah. So the, uh, the, I mean, there are some people who use so, so, so little internet that there's really never going to be a situation where they would need a mobile hotspot. And for those people, uh, using their phone in those extremely rare occasions is probably good enough. But really for anything more than, you know, 10, 15 minutes of continuous use, a, mo a mobile phone starts to really, really break down as a mobile hotspot. Really? All right. All right. It, it breaks down? Uh, it doesn't work well, you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't literally break down. No, it starts it, to it, overheat. The battery starts to go, starts to go very, very fast. And you start to drop calls because it's, you know, the, the processing is not meant for that. Okay. And so it's sharing the data. It, it doesn't, you know, if you try to do something simple like you normally would, like go get email, it won't connect to the server. You try to open a web web page, it'll be able to open the web page, but then it won't refresh properly. So all these kinds of things stop working properly with one device. As soon as you have two devices or three devices, you know, all your devices are kind of suffering. Mm. Yeah, and and, and then the hotspot, we spend a lot of time making that scenario specifically work. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and then even after that, let's say you just kind of use, you know, that one phone as a dedicated, uh, you know, tethering device, put on enough devices on there, uh, you know, and some even limit the amount that you can put on there. Uh, even the devices that connect to it through tethering, even those won't work well eventually because there's just too much data going through such a small, you know, narrow, uh, you know, bandwidth. Exactly correct. Yes, yes. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, and actually speaking of that, uh, I know a few carriers that actually kind of limit tethering to like five devices at once. Uh, the mobile hotspots, is it uh, as many until you can't get enough people in the immediate area? Or like, uh, is there a limit to the amount of uh, devices you can connect to this thing at once? The, the, the technology itself on this specific device is limited to 10. So okay. you can share with 10 devices, although, you know, at the end of the day, um, depending on what those 10 devices are doing, you will start to notice, you know, that yeah. the, the limitation of 10 devices is probably, um, it's probably more limited by the, the actual um, use uh, experience, as opposed to you can't connect any more devices. Yeah. Really? Uh, uh, well, in, in all practicality, I mean... 10, you know, if you want anything more than 10, then I think you're, you're, you're getting into the pro. You have too many friends. You need to cut someone out. It, it, it's getting yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. You're getting into the pro category at that point, I think. You know, and then maybe you want to consider one, one, of, one of those other ones that you had mentioned. Um, 
well, tell us about the cost, you know, of using this. I mean, is is data the same? Is data more expensive? Is it? Uh, I mean, uh, give us a, a how how does it break down if you're using the around town? So the around town today, you can buy. Uh, it's it's one hundred ninety nine dollars uh, for the device, including one gig of data, which lasts forever. Um, today, you can buy it uh, on Amazon for one eighty nine, so it's ten dollars off, and. Uh, once you run out of that first gig, you can buy an additional gig of data for $25, which, uh, full disclosure, is uh, a bit more expensive than what you're going to find from, you know, some of the other prepaid carriers. But the fact that it doesn't expire really provides a significant value. And because of that, because we know that it is a little bit more expensive and some people have use cases where they don't need forever data, we also have uh, some less expensive plans for uh, two gig and uh, five gig. Hmm. Okay. Um, and, and as I say, and you use only the, uh, you, I mean, you're paying for the data that you use, right? I mean, you buy it. It's sort of like a, 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 a like a prepaid phone. Would that be a, a good analogy? You, you buy it, you pay for it. Uh, yes, that is, that is the analogy. Uh, um, so there once upon a time was a world where you could actually go and pay. If you think back uh, when, when phones were, were relatively new, you could actually buy $5.75 worth of minutes and you could talk until your $5.75 ran out. And, and then at you know, some point... You know what that reminds me of? Yep. This is not the first we're hearing about. I remember when we had pay phones and you, you put $1.25 and did that. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and, and, and then when your time ran out, the operator would say, sorry, please deposit you know, 25 cents more, you know, whatever. So this isn't the first we've heard of this. It's been around for a long time. Ollie. That, yeah, that's exactly right. But the mobile operators over the last 25 years have done an amazing marketing job to convince us that that, doesn't, that, that model doesn't exist or doesn't work for us. Uh. And now if you go out and try to buy, I mean, we, even, even we can't sell $1.75 worth of data because that just doesn't simply exist today. Like there's, there's no way for anyone to sell that. But more, more to the point, there's no way to buy an amount of data and have that data with you forever today mm -hmm. other than essentially us. I mean, that's, that's it. We're, we're the only option out there and it doesn't even exist. Uh, well, it exists less and less globally, right? I mean, in, in Europe, even as recently as five years ago, you could go out and buy a $5 data card. And as long as you, um, as long as you didn't use it all up, it would be there for you forever. Whereas now, everywhere, it's a month, 30 days it expires. If you buy a sufficient amount, they'll give you 60 days or in you know extreme cases, that's, 90 days. That's terrible. But, that's terrible. I mean, you know, I, I like the fact that with obviously with something around town, you get a sense of security. You do know that you own those. No one's going to take it away from you. It's there and it's yours to be used as you need it. Um, I think that's very important. Uh, and uh, certainly, uh, uh, as sure. um, that 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 is important. Um, so, so uh, okay. So, uh, um, so that you you buy the uh, around town. It comes with a certain amount of data, and and that's yours, and it and it never and it never goes away. Um, so, right. what about security? Um, are there any advantages for using uh, uh, around town or a personal hotspot rather than, let's say, a public Wi-Fi connection? I mean, because th there people have VPNs and stuff like that to protect them, but of course, a lot of people still don't, and uh, they get they get burned. Uh, with with, the, with well, the, he, yeah, with an around town, I would think that you would have some security measures in place. Yeah. So if you think about a lot of times people think about a mobile hotspot. You know, we we ask people, what do you think of when you think of a mobile hotspot? And a lot of people said Starbucks because they're not thinking of the hotspot as mobile. They're thinking they're mobile mm -hmm. and they move to the hotspot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we ask them what, how, you know, how they use it and are they happy with it, et cetera, et cetera. And there's, you know, there's obviously an issue with consistency of service. You know, some days you could come in at two o'clock in the morning or whatever, four o'clock in the morning, Starbucks just opened and you're the only one on the network and you have a great experience. Mm -hmm. But most times there's a line, there's a ton of people, a bunch of people are connected. Anyone who has an AT&T phone automatically gets forced onto the Starbucks network. And now you're all on one network and you can all see each other unless you go out of your way to block other people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, you guys are all essentially sharing, uh, you know, one open connection. So you have to trust all of these strangers in the room with you. Whereas with a mobile hotspot, uh, 
you have access to username, password. You can specifically kick people off. If you, there's an icon in the middle of the screen that shows how many people are connected. If you know that your phone and your tablet are the only things connected to your hotspot and you see three users on, mm. then you know something's wrong. Mm. And you can very quickly and easily log into the interface, see who's connected, see whoever you don't want, and just kick them right off your network. That's nice. And that's certainly something you cannot do anywhere else. No, that's nice. I like that. That 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 really uh, gives you some control. It gives over. you a lot of control. Yeah, it gives you a lot of control. Um, that's so. That's very very nice. I, I have to ask you this: uh, How fast? I mean, everything is about speed today, broadband. How fast is the internet <laughs> connection you're going to get with with with, with uh, something like around town? What kind of speeds are we talking here? So with around town right now, we're seeing uh, speeds up to 20 megabits per second. Uh, in some cases, a little bit faster mm -hmm. because Sprint is rolling out. So re really, we rely on Sprint's network. And Sprint is rolling out a brand new network that they're calling Spark uh, on their on their band 41, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is uh, very broadband and can get very fast. So, you know, they're in test. They could see 25, 30 megabits per second. But we see typically the top speed is around 20 megs. If you are in a weak area or in an area where they're just rolling out LTE, uh, then you might get you know three, four, five megs, but it's still going to be a lot faster <clears throat> than what you get typically in a Starbucks or in a hotel or you know in any other situation or or even tethering with a with a phone. Yeah. All right. Well, look. It seems to be like the three levels that were uh, things that are of most concern with a with a mobile hotspot, and that is we've just talked about um, uh, how fast security, speed, security. and. How long can you use it on, on one charge? <laughs> that would be the thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's super important. And and we did the test, and the test is essentially full streaming, full HD. Uh, for how long can you do that? How long can you stream full HD at full speed? And we we know for a fact that ten hours is the average. So so many times you can do longer than that. So if you're doing other things, if you're also getting email, if you're all if you also have notifications on. Um, then it could be maybe a little bit less or a little bit more. And if you have four or five devices and you're also uploading at the same time, it could be a little bit less as well. But you're you're talking full day's use. You're you're if you leave the house in the morning, mm -hmm. you don't have to charge that again until um, late evening. Now, do you have the option uh, if you're the person with the, you're the mobile warrior do the, to plug it into the wall while you're using it and not rely? On, uh, yes. Ah, okay. Well, that's good. So you can plug it in. Yes, you absolutely can. It, it comes with a, a charging cable and a wall plug, and it's USB charging, so you can even use a, a, a laptop to charge it or a or PC. Or, you know, if you go to the airport now, you see more and more USB charging yeah. slots. You can yes. use any of those. You're seeing them in the airports. You're seeing them in cars. Uh, they are. They are certainly. A, and 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 <laughs> and as fast as we see them growing, we're seeing new USB standards coming around. I, was, I wonder if that charges USB two point oh, three point oh. So what is it going to be? You know? But uh, yeah, yeah. You know, most of them are all backwards compatible anyway. Uh, so uh, uh, so you can charge it, which is which is uh, good. And again, obviously, it's dependent. On the it's directly proportional to how many devices are accessing your uh, your around town. So. Yeah, I mean, at the end, at the end of the day, it's proportional to how much data you're pushing. Mm -hmm. So, if you have five devices but only one of them is pushing data, mm -hmm. then it's going to be the same like having one device pushing data. If you have five devices, all five pushing data, then yeah, absolutely, that that's going to slow you down. It's going to a you're, you're sharing that network across five users, so it's going to slow your connection. It's going to slow the amount of data you're able. To, it's going to increase the amount of data you use in a in a given um, period of time, and it's going to um, drain your battery faster. Okay. Well, obviously, this this sounds like something that uh, if you are doing any kind of internet access uh, away from home, and you and uh, and your mobile phone is just not cutting it, or you need to and you need to bring your PC to do it, uh, and you want to connect that way, um, your mobile uh, PC or your tablet, this certainly sounds like a piece of a, of necessary equipment. I love the fact that you can, on the screen, you can see all that additional information. Like, uh, and uh, even if someone else is trying to access your around town. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, something else we should probably mention because, again, uh, primarily a radio show here. Uh, what are the dimensions uh, of this thing? Oh, man, you got me on the spot now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute. Can I say it's cute? Yeah, it is cute. Small? <laughs> <laughs> Let me... <laughs> 
let me let me look at I I just so happen to have an internet connection here in front of me. Oh, fancy. Yeah, is it is it yeah. It looks like the size of a smart Well, let's see. I, uh actually I have her here right now. Uh the the around is by 2.4 inches by uh, about three quarter, about two thirds of an inch. That's about mm-hmm. the size of a smartphone, I, I would say. Yeah. It's, it's smaller than a smartphone. It's smaller it's than small, a smartphone. especially nowadays. Now it's it's smaller than an iPhone four. Wow. Okay. But it's it's thicker, but it's smaller in dimensions. But you can carry, you can put it in your shirt pocket, literally. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. That is very very. Yeah, it, it, you know, that's something that really the, the pictures really weren't conveying to me very well because I thought it was going to be the size of a small tablet, but it's it's actually much smaller than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, one way you could tell is the screen itself is 1.77 inch and you mm-hmm. can compare that against your iPhone 5, which is a four inch screen or your iPhone 6, which is a six inch or whatever. The big the big one is a six inch screen. Yeah. So and I like uh, it. And I like the fact that it's upgradable too. I mean, you, you can update it, you know, uh, uh, through software or firmware, whatever it is, when you when when giving it new uh, abilities, uh, without you having to buy a whole new unit, which is really nice. And I think that's the that's the direction the most hardware devices, especially of these types, are are, are going. Um, I, I hate to ask, but is there an app for the? <laughs> is there an app for this? I mean, the, is there? There can, is. There right, are two. Yeah. There are two apps. <laughs> uh, so so we're Netgear. So we have the Netgear Genie. And Netgear Genie controls all Netgear devices to one extent or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so as far as this is similar to any router, it has a SSID and a password and mm-hmm. certain settings. Um, those settings are available through Netgear Genie. Uh, if you want to really get into to see what's going on on your on your cellular connection, on your LTE connection, for that we have a we have an app called the AirCard app mm-hmm. because this is part of our AirCard line of products. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, uh, and so we have the Netgear AirCard app, which will okay. get you straight straight into all those uh, really good juicy details. Yeah, exactly, and uh, you have, and you can use so you can use your smartphone to control your around town uh, to control your access to the internet on your PC, <laughs> and uh, and and you're ready to rock and roll. It sounds to me uh, again, uh, all portable yeah. stuff. You know. Now, my understanding is, and, and you said that, that that there is no contract uh, mm-hmm. available for this, and uh, of uh, other than the obvious, you know, you know, the fact that uh, the advantage of not having a contract is there any other advantages of having a hotspot that doesn't require a, a contract? At the end of the day, it's about freedom. It's about giving people the feel of freedom, and if you have a contract, if you know there's an end date, mm-hmm. then immediately you start to feel constrained. So I, you know, I think of my in-laws, my in-laws have a, a RV and they're constantly asking me, well, how much is a gig? And I tell them, you know, I, we have, we've done this math and a gig is, you know, video chat for four hours, send, receive 3,500 emails, surf for 44 hours. And now they have this data and they have no idea what to do with it. They're like, okay, well, I, you know, how do I, how much of that am I going to use tomorrow? And mm-hmm. I, I have no idea. <laughs> you, however much you use, that's how much you're going to use. And so when I tell them you you have to use however much you buy, you're going to have to use that by this date. They say, you know what? I'll, I'd rather not. I'll just live without. Mm-hmm. But if I say buy this, use it however long it takes you to use it, and then get more if you need more, mm-hmm. they start to think about, wow, that's really something I could I could take advantage of. And so um, you know, it's it's. Uh, it's a different mindset. It changes what you think you can do with the device. It changes how you think you can use the device as opposed to just, um, you know, one, one checkbox to say, does it have a contract? No. Okay. So that's, that's one feature. This is, this is more of a, of a relationship that you have with the device with the technology. It really changes the way that you deal with it. Yeah. So like how, how we look at our smartphones today. I mean, uh, it, our smartphones are so much part of us, you know. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, they're they are getting too, pretty existential uh, around here. Yeah, but we are. I mean, it's an extension. Our smartphone. <laughs> it's an extension of what, what it is that we do. Uh, setting this up easy. Set up uh, an around town. Oh yeah. Hey, the, here I'll walk you through the process. Three steps. You get the device. You take it out of the package. You log into. Uh, AroundTownInternet.com. You put in a username and password. You turn the device on. The end. <laughs> really? And then I'm guessing at, at that point, you, 
You don't mm-hmm. get out of that. Yeah. And I guess, I'm guessing at that point, it just becomes, uh, as soon as it's turned on, your, your any device would recognize it as a, you know, as a Wi-Fi source. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. And then that actually brings up another point. This is the first device, the first mobile device, including phones, that you can actually buy for somebody else and hand it to them, and they can start using it right away. They don't have to give their credit card information. They don't have to sign up for any commitment, any contract. You know, I, I, I bought my mom uh, an iPhone 4 uh, a number of years ago and, for her birthday, and she was super excited at first. <laughs> and then she said, who's paying the bill? <laughs> and I said, well, well, you are. And she said, I don't know that I can take this from you, which was, you know, awkward. So, uh, you know, we, that, was, that was really a use case that I thought about at some length. How do we make it so that people feel comfortable buying this for somebody else, especially with a, with a you know, unique use case? And, and, you know, we made that possible. Yeah, I, it does. Uh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Definitely don't want to be giving people a, a, a monthly bill that they're going to have to start keeping track of as a gift. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, now, now you tell me. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. There's, <sighs> well, now I figured out. It, you, you, were, you were our canary. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're very, very welcome. <laughs> uh, so it makes, a, it makes a, gift, a good gift then. You can buy it. And, 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 and again, uh, once you, you turn it on and I turn on my smartphone, um, it, the, the, uh, the, uh, my smartphone will say, oh, I detected Wi-Fi. I put it and I can just tell my smartphone the name and password of my around town. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yep. that's it. Bro, it's done. You're off and running. And, it's, and, you know, because we know people forget their, user, their SSID and password and it's, a, it's kind of a, a big annoyance to have to write it down or change it or what yeah. have you. And we know that, you know, 90% of people leave whatever the SSID is out of the box, they leave that mm. as their SSID forever. So knowing that, we, we make it visible on the screen for people so they don't have to remember it. That is nice. And they can turn it off if they want to, but um, you know, very few people do. Yeah. And of course, when, of course, when it's Wi-Fi, you're not eating into your uh, cellular time. I guess which, yeah. which comes more expensive? Is it your cellular time or is it, or is it your around town time? I guess. So it depends on how you look at it. So if you have, for example, shared data uh, and you have like a number of different devices that you're sharing with, until you hit your limit, all that data is, quote, free to you. You've already paid for that mm-hmm. right ahead of time. Mm-hmm. The second you go over, now you're paying punitive charges. Mm. And at that point, it starts to get very expensive. So if you feel like you can live within your minutes for that month, then you're okay or you get your data uh, uh, bucket. But if you really start to push outside of those boundaries, there's a, there's a big punishment coming at the end of that. Yeah, exactly. Kind of catches you at the end. Uh, yeah. Oh, like, you know, I, I, I really wish we had more time uh, to talk about because you're, hey, you were with Netgear and we really didn't get into any of the other products that we wanted to talk about. Uh, the, the, the routers and the Nighthawk and all the, the great things and the cameras and, and... But I feel like we have explained the crap out of this thing, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for giving me a uh, for giving me a, a megaphone for yeah. this product. I'm really excited to have had this opportunity. Hey, it's, it, and in exchange, if you would like, I can stay on for a little bit of extra time and talk to you about some of the other products if you if you'd like. Yeah, we we, we have time. We do have time. Okay, well, all right, all right. So uh, we're what we'll do is at the top of the hour, we're going to take a little break, and uh, we'll do a couple. We'll talk a little bit about some of the other Netgear products with you, and then. Uh, and then before we do our computer and technology news, uh, that's actually um, a very nice offer, and we're going we're to take you up on it. Um, one one of the things I want to uh, ask you about is the rout- uh, routers. Obviously, Netgear is so well known for your routers. I guess routers are one of the first products that you make. And uh, when we, mm-hmm. uh, I look at the, uh, I mean, I have had, had all kinds of Netgear routers as you've developed newer and newer models. You know. And right now, the Nighthawk. Back in my day, it was insane to put two antenna on a on a router. <laughs> right. <laughs> then I look at the Nighthawk X6 tri-band Wi-Fi router. This thing is bristling <laughs> with antennas, and it looks like a stealth. Yes. It looks like a stealth fighter. And I understand your wife called it something else, though. <laughs> yes, she thought she thought it looked like a spider upside down. <laughs> Spider Man's right. Our home with Wi-Fi. Spider Man's router, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. It's one of his choice. 
Uh, so when I, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about you know the router technology that you have uh, and 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 why all these little antennas and and some of the advantages of of uh, obviously you can buy a very basic router uh, and or you can go yep. all the way up to the top of the line and you have a, a you have some basic routers that we can talk about and then go up to the top of the line uh, when we come back. Okay, so uh, we're going to break. And then we'll be right back. So I'm going to ask you to stay on the phone, Oleg, and uh, we'll be right back with you. Uh, you're listening to the Computer America Show uh, here on the Blog Talk Radio Network, on the IRN Radio Network, on the TuneIn Radio Network, all these different networks. Uh, we're going to do computer technology news coming up in the second hour, but we're just going to uh, talk a little bit more with Netgear. Again, if you have a comment or question, uh, we're giving you a little extra opportunity, 347 884 8881 347 or uh, join us in our uh, chat room uh, at uh, computeramerica.com. Nice, friendly people in there, too. So, yeah. oh, look at that. Uh, um, <laughs> you listen to the Computer America show. As I said, we're gonna take a little break and then we'll continue on. Um, Netgear is gonna stay with us for a few extra minutes and then we will do computer and technology news. Brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. Got some really interesting news stories coming up, too. Stay with us. We will be right back. Oh, our, our, our uh, social media winner, too. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at ComputerAmerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And, uh, Ben, you just move around from corner to corner. It's so slick. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. You're just bouncing around there. Uh, and if you're watching our live Computer America video stream, uh, you can see Ben is his bouncing self uh, and in front of the uh, Netgear website. Um, we're going to do computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities. They are the official optimization software of Computer America. However, uh, uh, we've gotten uh, Oleg Fischel, who is the uh, senior product line manager for Netgear, to spend a few more minutes with us. So, um, uh, Oleg, let's talk a little bit about, we were talking about around town, of course. And, uh, but I want to talk about some of the other products that Netgear makes, uh, including the, the, the top-of-the-line Nighthawk X6 tri-band Wi-Fi router. This uh, looks to me as... Not just a router, but an 802.11ac router, which is still uh, you know, not in a lot of people's homes yet. People's homes yet. There you go. Okay. So tell us about this router. This, this is, would you, this is, is this like the top-of-the-line consumer router that you have currently? Today, yeah, this is our top of the line today. today. Yeah, today. Any second now, <laughs> it will be announced as uh, you know yesterday's news. Really? But yeah, oh that's. I mean, this this is the this is the uh, you know this is I would say the tip of the spear for us in our direction to have the most powerful, the most feature rich router on the market, and so it has. Um, you know, so many bands running simultaneously that if you combine them all, you can get 3.2 gigabits per second of speed. And I mean, if you try to think about how that use case works out, it's just, you know, bends your mind a little bit. But the reality is uh, we're, you know, we're trying to hold our mantle as Netgear, the leader of router technology. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we have to have the, the best and, and, and the brightest. Now, uh, or the mo most powerful. Mm -hmm. Now, in any other time period, we probably would have, that would have been a niche router. Um, even the R7000 would have been a, a niche router that very few people would have used, only power users. But because more and more and more people are adding tons of devices into their homes, it started with tablets, and then they started adding cameras, and then Wi-Fi light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you have like 30, 40 things connected to your network at one time, and your router starts being the bottleneck, not with the speed of the internet, 
Hey, well, we're, but with its ability to handle all those connections. Hey, it's the Internet of Things. This is the uh, this is where we're living now. Everything, even your crockpot has access to the Internet now. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And to make sure that your crockpot doesn't lose its Internet connection, you you really do need a router that's made to handle lots and lots and lots of connections. There you go. And and so that's that's what that's what all those antennas are for. All the different connections. But it's not one antenna per connection, right? I mean, it's the, 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 it just gets you better, a more solid uh, a connection uh, to your these these uh, uh, wireless devices, um, and yeah, better range. Yeah, we have this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We have this concept of lanes. So we we imagine uh, you know fast lane, um, mid speed lane, and slow lane, or you have the passing the fast lane, the passing lane, and so uh, we. Are, we are able now with the technology that's available in these routers, uh, particularly in the R8000, the top of the line, to figure out which device has what speed, segregate that device to the speed that, to the, a band that's dedicated to that speed, and to make sure that you can get the most speed per device uh, based on its capability. So if, for example, you have an old 11N one by one device, it's going to stick it on a, a band of its own. And it's not going to get in the way of your device, which is maybe two by two AC that can, that can take like really super fast, uh, speeds, you know, one, one gigabit per second. And, and you can, and you, you segregate these things and make sure that they don't interfere with one another. And the fact that it does it all intelligently with smart connect, uh, that, um, that really, you know, is necessary for people today because, if you have a if a refrigerator, for example, that connects to the internet, it doesn't need high speed. No, but you don't want that high speed, well, ref, uh, that slow speed refrigerator interfering with your Roku connection. That's true, unless you unless you're ordering a lot of food on your, through your refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're ordering a four K speed food, I don't know. <laughs> I, I would love to see that reality show. Uh, so and uh, uh, one thing that I want to make or, uh, that we should make clear to people is uh, the difference between uh, 811 or uh, I'm sorry 80211 uh, BGN uh, you know that kind of thing and the difference between that and 80211 AC because just now are we starting to see devices that are compatible with this but it, it really doesn't matter unless you have you know uh, unless you have a router that's capable of doing this yeah well, so, so mm -hmm. that's Wi-Fi with air conditioning right. To eleven AC, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Ah, okay. Very close, though. All right. Okay. <laughs> so tell us. Uh, so uh, obviously, the uh, the Nighthawk uh, takes advantage of the AC uh, um, uh, standard, and 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 more and more yeah. devices are now. Uh, you know, it always takes time for hardware to catch up to these new standards, which are always in uh, in works and in, in, in draft mode for you know it seems like years before they got finally get approved. Um, but then they do, and then of course you're hard pressed to find anything out that supports your, the, the router that has it. Uh, but eventually they, they start they start showing up. But it takes time. But at least you're ready, you know, when you have a your router. I guess your router is one of your first. It's the central. It point. should be your first. Yeah, it's the yeah. first thing uh, when you when you're adopting a new Wi-Fi standard to make sure that it is, it, it's re it's it's ready. Your your router is ready for this new Wi-Fi standard, and then you start buying products that support it. Correct. Yeah, we also see that people look at a router as a bit of an investment in their home, uh, and so they want something that's going to last for a while. Uh, even a router that's that's not in the top tier, super expensive router, super high end, quote unquote. Um, people still see that as okay. I'm spending money on this thing. I want to make sure it's still relevant a year or two from now. And you know, if you're seeing people start to trickle in a particular technology today, then you know, two years from now, that's going to be mainstream. And if you don't, if you can't support that technology, then your device is essentially useless. So that that's a big part of it, the, the future proof aspect. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, so many times the routers, so when they come out with something new or a change, they you, as with a lot of most equipment today, it's all upgradable via the internet. You can, you know, the, they can upgrade the uh, the firmware, the the add new features, fix features that might have broken, or 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 new equipment might be breaking, and then they can modify the router, the the equipment to adjust for that. So um, certainly that flexibility yeah, is really actually. Here. I'd give you a couple of examples of, of exactly what you're talking about right now. So uh, on our Nighthawk line, uh, R seven thousand is our is our 
our core. Uh, that was our first Nighthawk router, and it's been around the longest. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's typically the first one to get all of the new stuff. Mm -hmm. So we are right now, uh, or we've recently announced um, dynamic quality of service on that router. We've recently announced uh, ready cloud capability on that device. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be propagating throughout our entire line of, of Nighthawk routers. And so you buy the router today, you know, a couple of weeks or months from now, um, you know, you just come up to the come up to your network, uh, not having done anything, and you have all this additional capability. And like beam forming, at least. Uh, um. <laughs> uh, beam forming is a technology that uh, that is inherent to the to the technology uh, that it in, is inherent to the chipset to the hardware. Yeah. So we can't we can't really add beam forming, but we can we can improve upon the beam forming that exists on the on the router. Right. Exactly. Well, eventually, with, with I, firmware. Yeah, I mean, you can do only just, you can do so much. And then, obviously, when something new, new, new comes out, then you have to have then it's a hardware just. But you can certainly extend the life of that hardware by adding uh, new features uh, to it. You know, as they become available, and uh, certainly adds more life uh, to the product. You know, uh, and, and yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and yet another example of that is uh, uh, right now we have a USB port, uh, actually a um, USB 3.0 port on all of our Nighthawk routers. Uh, at least one, and you can connect to that a uh, hard drive. And now with ReadyCloud, that hard drive is accessible throughout the internet, just like you know people are familiar with Dropbox or Google Drive or Microsoft, whatever they call their thing. Um, so this allows you to have your own personal cloud with a, a mobile, or sorry, with a, um, a USB hard drive, which is connected to your router. It's a fairly uh, in a fairly inexpensive way to create your own personal club. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, okay, listen, we have a caller uh, who's, uh, I, I believe I know who this is, but uh, uh, we're going to take it. I think it's, I think uh, it's Sean. No, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, computer, uh, co computer American Craig Crossman. Hey, Shane, how are you? How are you doing, Craig? Okay, what's up? Uh, I, have, I have a question for the gentleman. Uh, being, I'm sorry that I missed part of the show, you know, life stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, being that, uh, I believe it was what, Samsung's working together uh, for gigabit wireless uh, for, for phones and, and other internet purposes. And the fact that most uh, computers today, whether they are laptop, desktop or or, uh, or solid state uh, portable drives uh, are running some sort of gigabit technology. Mm -hmm. What is the max load uh, for a mid-grade router? I mean, you know, could it handle, you know, five or more computers running gigabit technology passing data back and forth? I mean, does oh, that become a standard where, where, where something like that is capable of happening, or are you still trying to reach that point? So that's a very interesting question. Thank you very much for, uh, for asking. Um, so you're essentially asking on the local network, uh, what's, the, what's the fastest amount of, or what's the most amount of speed that, that you can communicate amongst all of your different devices? Am, am, am I yes, correct? That, that's so, correct, sir. So, so let, let, let's imagine a real-life scenario. So you have a smart TV, you have a, let's say you have a network-attached storage device, uh, you know, probably from Netgear, and you have uh, maybe another computer somewhere with, uh, with a gigabit connection, and they're all sharing the data on the NAS. So um, the NAS has gigabit, the, the TV has gigabit, the, your... Um, PC has gigabit, and then your phone also, you're streaming something local on your phone. So absolutely, the, uh, the device can handle, uh, the, the, high, the higher end the router, the easier it is to, to handle all of that, all those connections. And, and a lot of it, it unfortunately, there, it's not like uh, the speed from, from uh, your, uh, from your uh, over-the-air connection, or it's not like, like your Wi-Fi speed. It's, and it's not even like your speed that you get from your, from your operator, because it really depends on how you're using the data like what you're using the data for. So if you're just streaming video, uh, actually, because of buffering and all kinds of different technologies that are available, streaming video is not that hard on the router at the end of the day. 
uh, if you're doing something more uh, data intensive, uh, that's you know really really pressuring on on the router, up, a lot of upload, a lot of download, uh, a lot of moving back and forth packets, then then that puts more uh, pressure on the uh, on the router, and it's just all about the processor at the end of the day. And and we have uh, you know very very high end processors on our higher end routers. Yeah. So I. I, I don't know that I answered your question, but what I can say, all, all I can really say is yes, absolutely. All of these ports are gigabit ports on the back of most of our routers, yeah. and they can absolutely handle, um, you know, multiple gigabit connections at the same time. Yeah. And it will continue to be able to handle that um, up to a very, very high level. Okay, Shane. That does answer my question. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, and thanks for calling. Yep. All right, come back, Shane. All right. Uh, uh, we, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, um, um, Oleg, uh, we were talking to Oleg's uh, Netgear's uh, senior product line manager. Um, uh, we do have some new stories, but I, I want to thank you so much for uh, being with here with us and kind of taking the extra time to uh, talk to our listeners and tell us all about the amazing uh, um, uh, um, Netgear line of products, especially around town. Again, check it out. We have the link to the Netgear website. And, uh, and 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 I feel bad for for the designers of these routers because I don't know how many, how many more legs they can fit <laughs> on this thing. So uh, I I don't know where to go from there. More, there's more. Believe me when I tell you more. The answer is <laughs> more. you can fit more. Oh no. Okay. Uh, well, yes, the neck gear porcupine. Yeah, we'll just have to have you back to <laughs> to, to, uh, to tell us. Uh, certainly keep us informed, and we'll get you back on when you can tell us all the new stuff. These new things. Love to see it. <laughs> All right. Look, look forward to it. Oh, like thanks for being here with us on Computer America tonight. Have a have a good evening. Thank you very much, and I look forward to listening to your next show as well. All right, excellent. Take care. Bye bye. Good night. <laughs> good night. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Uh, there you go. Netgear. Uh, again, thanks. Rather for nice of them to stay over for an extra uh, for an extra fifteen minutes, so we can yeah. you know touch on the touch on the router, which I think is uh, really the area where people know Netflix er, Netflix uh, <laughs> Netgear the most. <laughs> exactly, and Netflix too. Uh, but yeah, and of course, without them, it'd be hard to get Netflix. There you go. Uh, There's a tie-in. Well, exactly. All right. Uh, well, uh, I think we have a lot of news stories, and uh, we want to. Uh, uh, we have to say good night to our chat rooms. Uh, uh, I have to say good night to him. Somebody's leaving. All right. All right. Let's do some computer and technology news, and uh, and get started with the, these stories. And also, we we have our social media winner of the week coming up too. So let's get started. All right. Tonight's computer and technology news is brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. You can visit them at slimwareutilities.com to clean, speed up, and optimize your Windows system for free. That's right, you heard me correct. Everything at slimwareutilities.com is completely free. The, um, you, you don't have to pay for them later. You don't have to upgrade them. They are all free. Uh, check them out. Download them all. Keep them on your hard drive because sooner or later you're going to want them. You're going to want them to clean, speed up, and optimize your Windows system. Check them all out. SlimwareUtilities.com. You'll thank us for it, and you'll be happy that you did. SlimwareUtilities.com. And uh, why don't you lead with the first story, Ben? Sure. Uh, the first story tonight is going to be a personal favorite of mine because, uh, as Craig says so often, I am the consummate gamer. As soon as I look up the word consummate, I'm sure I might either be <laughs> even be offended. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I enjoy video games. One of my favorite. Uh, I've, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be just the right age, uh, the tender age of, oh, you know, probably about nine or ten when halo you know when halo combat evolved came out halo one i remember and it. yeah and that was a lot of fun on the original xbox played it you know played it like crazy mm -hmm. and halo 5 has been announced that nothing new there they show game they, they showed uh gameplay uh at e3 they show the opening trailer at e3 mm -hmm. made the announcement all that good stuff but they've just announced the limited edition uh collectors Ooh. for halo 5 and they do this every year you know uh i remember i think it was halo 3 that came with a giant master chief uh spartan helmet mm -hmm. there were others that came in you know uh, collectible tin cases they're you know they, they always do something very very flashy mm -hmm. and it, it uh it it kind of separates those who play halo and those who really enjoy halo 
Live because the, these these collector's editions, they're not cheap. Oh. They're not cheap. Like it, it's it's already a sixty dollar game, which a lot of people would kind of already peg at uh, an expensive buy. But then here, you know, in this article according to Max and PC, uh, Kevin Parrish, Halo Five Guardians limited edition. Or, I'm sorry, limited collector's edition will cost a scant two hundred and fifty dollars. That's a lot of Halo. And remember, you don't uh, you don't get any kind of you know special ending. You don't get uh, you know anything different than anyone else. Maybe some other pre-orders kind of stuff. But in general, you're you're paying for the same game. But that two hundred fifty bucks comes with a bunch of collectible swag, mm. and that's what you're really buying. Mm-hmm. So uh, inside the bundle is uh, in addition, of course, to the game is going to be, let's see, they have a breakdown by bullet point here, a uh, commemorative statue of Master Chief and Spartan Lock by Triforce. Uh, if you're watching our video stream, you can see it here, but they're going to be nice, uh, nice, you know, full, h- highly detailed plastic uh, replicas of Master Chief and Spartan Lock, who, uh, you know, who's going to be a, you know, kind of like a, uh, a second protagonist to the Halo series. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Can, can you lift the the uh, the um, visor up on on Master Chief and see what his face? No, is? not at all. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Completely done on purpose. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and so let's see. Next one is a Guardian model uh, by Metal Earth. That's uh, let's see. Oh, yep, down here at the bottom left uh, of the screen. Very very cool. And uh, let's see, uniquely designed Spartan-themed steelbook. So a, a a nice little steelbook that goes along with your collection. Warzone uh, REQ bundle, 14 premium uh, requisition packs. Uh, da- dossier on Blue Team and Fire Team uh, Osiris. Spartan Locks classified orders. A- again, all these they they may sound like complete gibberish to those of you who aren't uh, into Halo, but they're 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 geeky kind of stuff that you aren't going to get anywhere else of -hmm. course they're going to have pictures of all this stuff up online you know like as soon as people spend 250 dollars on this they're going to post it up everywhere but hey you're not going to get many chances to actually own this kind of stuff uh the next is of course uh halo the fall of reach the animated series very very fun to watch and a two-week uh trial of xbox gold which let's face it most people probably are probably already have if you're buying, um, if you're buying this, you got gold. That's yep. it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and then there's also a cheaper uh, limited edition bundle for only a hundred bucks. That's uh, sixty dollars for the game, and then an extra forty for the limited edition, and that includes everything except for the uh, except for the detailed statues of Master Chief and Spartan Locke. So uh, you know, a little bit less, but really, the action figures are going to be the big grab there. Yeah, I think the action figures is what makes it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, for for sure. And, and it comes in a a nice packaging. It kind of looks like uh, one of the storage trunks uh, that you see all over, like inside the game. They they uh, they made one, you know, just just for the Halo Five packaging. So hey, if if you're a nerd, like I remember going to the midnight release of Halo Three. Yes. And and I went to Walmart, and there was a line out the door of nerdy people like you would not believe like i was among my kind M- minute minute release at walmart but then uh like the guy that was like literally standing in front of me and i was talking to him he uh you know he, he was kind of complaining that he didn't get a chance to pre-order and he's just hoping they had one there well uh they said that they had an extra limited edition halo 3 and it, it was this huge bundle. It cost like 250 bucks or maybe even $300. And he jumped out of line and, you know, held up a fistful of cash and said, I'll take that. And he jumped to the front of the line, bought the thing on the spot with $300 and walked out the store, like <laughs> just skip the whole line. So, oh, you. you know, people go crazy over, the, you know, people, people go crazy over this kind of thing. Yeah. Well, there's a collectors. You know, that's what makes collecting collectors collectors and everybody else everybody else right. wise words craig yes i think so wise words. They're, they're impassioned you know they, they you have something and you're a collector and and you know money is no object at that point makes sense 
Oh, well, money is an object, but two hundred fifty bucks—that's that's still pretty steep. Start saving your 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 lunch money now because uh, yeah, two hundred fifty bucks. Your lunch. Look forward to it. Okay, all right. That along with a white Xbox One, you're all set. Um, yep. Uh, we've been talking about Windows Ten. This next story from Maximum PC. Uh, evidently, uh, uh, Dell has begun taking pre-orders on PCs that have Windows Ten installed on them. Which I think is kind of nice. This again uh, by Paul Lilly, um, and he asked the question: "You think maybe Dell is excited about Windows 10?" Yeah, well, uh, because uh, they have begun to—they're uh, the only major other equipment manufacturer, Dell, to begin offering pre-orders for select Windows 10 devices. Uh, and evidently, he says. Although he hasn't checked for sure, he says, uh, you know, under some boutique system builders, he says Dell might be the only PC seller to do so. Period. Okay. Um, which is kind of newsworthy. I mean, I mean, it's 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 here. Um, um, customers in the U.S. can pre-order select Dell window devices with Windows 10 starting today. That will ship starting July the 29th. That's the big day Microsoft releases its new operating system. Okay. Uh, Plus, with same-day shipping from Dell, you can receive your order as early as the 30th of July and be the first on your block to show off your brand new Windows 10 device, <laughs> along with your Halo 5. Uh, Here, here's why. Here's why I don't like about this. Like Dell's obviously trying to drum up uh, some some sales on the fact that hey, go ahead, pre-order your new computer. And we'll put Windows 10 on it, and we'll have it shipped out to you, and you can check out Windows 10 on your new device. What they, you know, what they didn't mention in that whole statement, which of course would kind of, you know, tone down the whole thing, is that uh, let's face it, if you have a Windows 7 or 8.1 or 8, uh, uh, you know, Windows machine, hey. You can uh, you can just upgrade it to Windows 10 right away. Mm -hmm. So, but but they're trying to push for the fact that this is going to be a brand new device built around Windows 10. So, like that's their big selling point. Well, and is it a big selling point? Uh, selling point? I mean, I mean, personally, not really, because uh, like like uh, I don't know what the masses think, but Windows has made a pretty good. Uh, campaign uh, has made a pretty good campaign for the fact that hey, you can upgrade any of your older devices for um, you know for no cost to Windows 10, mm -hmm. and yet they're trying to push the fact that Windows 10 is now a selling point when every old computer that was sold probably within the last uh, five to six years is going to get the exact same upgrade for free. So who knows how many people it's going to draw in. But, uh, you know, personally, coming from a tech background, this isn't too, uh, you know, too much of a selling point. Okay. Well, you know, I, I guess they're, they're, they are, uh, they're just saying that, um, that uh, if you want a new computer and you want to have it, you want to be the first kid in the block to have your Windows 10 device up, uh, they're, making, them, they're making, uh, making it available. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, so I understand uh, we have a caller. Yeah, uh, we do. I think it's 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 <laughs> ah return of the Shane. It's the Shane on you. Okay, Computer America. Hi, Shane. How are you? <laughs> I, I can call in as Bob next time if you want. <laughs> um, you know, I I I actually want to contest your theories on this. I think it actually is a selling point. Whilst uh, genuine seven and eight users will be getting. Uh, the upgrade for free, there is a catch-22 to it. You will get it for free for only a year. Mm -hmm. Now, after that year, you have two choices. It's either you can downgrade back to your original operating system or you can actually pay full retail price for it. Really? So so, so, it's a, so you get it for a year, but then they kind of prompt you to say, hey, upgrade and pay us money, or you get reverted? Uh, pretty much, yeah. It's only free for a year. It's it's not it's not like it was before with uh, like when you had Vista 
or, or seven, and uh, you bought your computer close to the purchasing date or the release date of Windows, the next Windows operating. Are you sure that's offers? So what would happen is you, you get a free upgrade. That's what. Are you sure that offer is only for those who pirated the the, the operating system and not for legitimate purchase? No, I said I said for those who are genuine. What? It's, not, it's no, it's not. It, the free year upgrade to ten is not accessible to anyone who 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 has pirated their operating system. Okay. And it's only for seven and eight, not Vista or XP or Windows Millennium. What about what about uh, well, uh, well, no, no, uh, the, you know, that's not uh, like this is new. This is news to me. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the, this is news to me. And, and I, I'm sorry, we're about to head into a break, but we'll definitely keep you on uh, for after the break. But uh, this is news to me. I thought, you know, if you upgrade to Windows 10, you got that, you know, forever. Like that's just how it was. But you're saying it's only yeah. for the first year, and then you and then you have to make it for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to check that. Well, well during the break, uh, we're we'll going to have Ben check this out and, and see if uh, you know your stuff, Shane, okay? All right, so stay on the phone. Oh, uh, <laughs> Listening to the uh, Computer America show. Um, um, Shane says that, you know, you only get it for a year, and then you have to buy it like everybody else. But it's, I, this is supposed to be Windows forever, right? Windows 10, it's the last version of Windows. Uh, I never have to pay for it again. We'll find out. We're going to do the research, and we'll come back. Also, we have our um, um, our winner of the week, our social media winner of the week. That's coming up, too. We'll be right back with all that. Stay with us. You too, Shane. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. The mission of Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is to help build a sustainable, no-kill community where no dogs or cats are ever killed for population control, where true euthanasia is reserved only for animals who are irremediably suffering or for animals who are truly a threat to society and with no hope of rehabilitation. Brother Wolf staff and volunteers go door-to-door, -door, neighborhood by neighborhood, to educate citizens about local resources available for at-risk pets and to help their families connect with those resources. Brother Wolf's community-based approach to no Kill helps keep family pets healthy, happy, and in their homes and out of the local shelter system in the first place. For more information or to make a tax-deductible donation to this wonderful 501c3 organization, visit their website at www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy? Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule. Your company's getting ready for its IPO. And you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? <laughs> Not so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. Hey, do your parents know you're here? Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. This time, I fix it, spudgers and picks. Did you ever need to open the case on a piece of gear that was designed to discourage any user ever opening it? From the den of metaphorical safe cracking tools of iFixit.com, we got in three beauties to review. The spudger is a plastic stick, pointy at one end and bladed like a flat screwdriver at the other, with a small hook gap along one side of the blade. With it, small holes and skinny gaps become a fair starting point for the process of separating case tabs. A large, heavy-duty spudger helps with slightly larger gaps, like the ones we always see that are just a little too small to fit a screwdriver. The iFixit opening picks have about the same footprint as a guitar pick, but they're thicker, except at the three corners, which taper down 
to rounded blades that are very adept at slicing into the adhesive that holds many cases together. Bottom line, the iFixit spudger, heavy duty spudger, and opening picks are great prosecutors for reopening closed cases. Marty Winston, News Tips Bulletin for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show uh, for the last time this week. Uh, here Friday, uh, Friday night, second hour ha- after the half hour, yes. uh, we like to do something where we, um, oh, how to put this, <laughs> give away free stuff. Uh, now you're in hiding because I can't see you. Are you, are you so in, in, in the anticipation of this that you we can't even see you? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. But uh, yeah, so we like to give away free stuff, and that free stuff uh, was provided to us by Logitech to give away uh, because no one wants our stuff. But people <laughs> like Logitech stuff. They they make great stuff, and they make a great glass touchpad. So, uh, Craig, I believe you have something, or uh, not something, someone already picked up. Yes, we do. We have somebody. He is our social media winner of the week. I uh, see. I gave it away the gender. I said he. I said that person. Okay, so we uh, we now know it's a he. Okay, <laughs> and this week's social media winner is Robert Alif. <laughs> Robert Alif. I don't know if it's a lift or a leaf, but. A lift, a leaf? Yes, Robert wins the Logitech wireless rechargeable retar- touchpad T650. You know dot- what? Forget it. We don't know the last name. Just all Roberts come to the front, and we'll sort <laughs> out after that. No, that's too many Roberts. We can't do that. But the congratulations to you of being our, our social media winner this week, and uh, we'll get that out to you ASAP. And again, go to ComputerAmerica.com and go to all of our social media uh, sites. They're, it's right there on the right-hand, pay- right-hand side of any of our pages at ComputerAmerica.com. And register. I mean, just uh, like our Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I mean, we have our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, Pinterest. All the ones. Just and each one you do is an additional chance that you have to win it. And you only have to do it once. And then every week, you're all the different ones. We factor that in, and you get a, that much more of a chance to win some of the prizes that we give away on every Friday. Okay, so that's how we do that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we were talking to uh, Sean's brother, Shane, about <laughs> this. Uh, I, was, I was about to say, how dare you call him Sean again? The poor man. The poor man. Oh, it's Sean's brother, Shane, uh, about uh, Windows 10. And uh, we, and he contested the fact. He said that you only get it for a year. And we're going, we're going oh, we thought it was forever, Windows 10 forever. But uh, uh, now, Ben... Did you do some research through, through through furious Googling that has happened over the past three minutes and freaking out, <laughs> quite frankly, um, I am not coming up with any viable sources that say after a year, if you already have the the appropriate license for Windows 10, you know, through the upgrade path of having Windows 7, Windows 8, what have you, you have to pay for that license or you have to validate that, that license after a year. I'm not finding anything like that. Shame. Oh, okay. uh, I'm still looking for the previous articles I had on the subject. Okay. Uh, I, I do know that uh, it will be free uh, for the first year, and you have to install it within the first year. Mm-hmm. I know that much. Yeah. But I also was, uh, as far as I last knew about uh, when I was checking up on it, was that you could you could download it anytime within that year, and you could have it for up to a year. And then you would you 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 would uh, you'd pay for it after that. But I might have been. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it's that whole you get it for up to a year. That's the part I can't verify because you can definitely download it for the first year. Uh, you know, of course, having any of those pre-existing devices, you can download it for free and you get it. But I'm not. But I'm not reading up to a year. It's just you you get it for the life of that device. You know, what we'll do. We'll continue to check on it, and when back we come back on Monday. Uh, uh, Shane will uh, will more than likely have the proper answer for you. Okay. Well, if we can't find it, we'll contact Microsoft and get an answer. We have connections. Oh yeah, that's right. We do know someone. Yes, we do. Yeah. All right, Shane. All right. Sorry for sending you guys into a tizzy. No, okay. <laughs> we're just glad that you're listening. I and uh, and and uh, keep listening. Okay. We like you in the chat room. All take, right. take care. Bye bye. All, right, All right. All right. All right. So there you go. Again, three, four, Freaked seven. Me, the heck out.
You did, yeah. I did. 347-884-8881. That's the number that'll get you on and get you through. Ben and I are doing computer technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. And uh, so um, I just finished a story about, you know, Dell taking pre-orders on Windows 10 PCs. So, and you did the the Halo 5 uh, collect. I did, I did. So, so what else, uh, let's go with this. This one's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it. It shouldn't be too long of an article. This one uh, I pulled from CNET. Author, uh, Mr. Chris Met, uh, Medichek. Sure. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Chris, I butchered your last name. Anyways. It's a check. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Anyways. Uh, CNET. Samsung calls selfie stick users, quote unquote, cave people. No way. Really? Hilarious. So technically incorrect in a new ad for its Gal uh, for its Galaxy S6 and S uh, S6 Edge, Samsung mercilessly mocks those who stick their phones on the end of a stick. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so there uh, there are those moments in life that uh, when tiny breaths of fresh air suddenly strike and make us feel not alone. Uh, the author uh, feels this way after hearing words uttered by Samsung in a new ad. No, those words aren't, we're exploring a merger with Apple, nor are they, we admit that smartwatches are just our way of trying to get you to look silly. Uh, instead, it's the, it's, uh, instead, in the middle of a lament about people struggling to take wonderful selfies, Samsung says, quote, this is what it, this is what it's come to. Human sardine, uh, human sardines packing into tiny frames, carrying around sticks like cave people. <laughs> and yes the author has campaigned long against the uh the visual and moral blight that is the selfie stick mm -hmm. and finally a corporation admits that seeing his product perch on the end of a stick is the equivalent is the equivalent to witnessing a naked hairy man uh <laughs> not doing nice things in your front yard exactly uh, so well. you know but but that's pretty much it uh Samsung has a new ad out that is likening uh, selfie stick users to cave people. Okay, and why is this socially significant? <laughs> I'm not sure. Because selfie sticks are somehow socially uh, significant. Like they're they're popping up all over the place. There are ways for people to, uh, you know, get either more people in the frame or make yourself look cooler. Or I don't know what the purpose of these things are. They are getting ridiculous. They're blocking people's view. They are getting out of control. And hey, at least a corporation, albeit Samsung, is finally taking charge and saying, enough people. Get a grip. Get a grip. Get a grip. Okay. Well, speaking of getting a grip. Get uh, a grip or get longer arms. I don't yeah. know. I don't just, know. Just the stick seems out of, you know, out of place. Okay. Now, here's a story. This is from BGR. And, um, well, we, I remember when we had 3G speeds on our cell phones and then it went up to 4G. 4G, and then it went up to 4G LTE. Well, guess what, folks? Guess what's around the corner? 5G <laughs> speeds. 5G is just around the corner. They're saying it will be even faster than we thought. Um, <sighs> It's not around the corner yet because they say it's going to debut at the 2018 Winter Olympics. So we still have some time. We have uh, we have about three years before it comes in. Well, no, 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 no. It's going to debut yeah. at the 2018 Winter Olympics. Uh, they actually don't have it slated to start you know, going out to customers until 2020. Okay, so that's even further away. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's exactly. Suffice to say, the mobile experience of today may soon feel like an old 56K dial-up modem just a few years ago. So um, um, now, according to the Korea Times, they are so far advanced of us, Korea. South Korea's got it going on. Yeah. 5G will be defined as a network capable of transmitting data at up to 20 gigabits, 20 gigabits per second over the air. 20 gigabits per second over that, the that, air that's that's 19 that's 20 times faster than than google's you know than google fiber fiber yeah it's one gigabit and that's over that's over uh fiber optic fiber optic this is 20 gigabits per second 
uh, a speed which would enable users to download high definition movies in just a few seconds. Uh, by way of contrast, the peak 4G speeds, that's the top, top, top peak, a top out of 150 megabits per second. That's 150 megabits per second, okay? Though most people never enjoy that type of speed anyway. So 5G, 20 gigs per second. Now, now the 5G network will also have the capacity to provide more than 100 megabits per second average data transmission to over 100, over 1 million Internet of Things devices, uh, uh, the Internet of Things devices, within one square kilometer. Okay, so all your stuff that's IoT is going to be connected to this. Ahead of a planned 2020 commercialization timeline, the ITU will soon start accepting technology to be considered for 5G standard, which to say there's a still a whole lot of work to be done to make 5G much more of a reality than an idea. But, you know, there it is. I mean, you know, it's not that yep. far. You know, another five years, and we'll have it, 5G. Well, your smartphone... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah and, and by the way, uh, our, our good friend Shane in the chat room just now uh has has issued a retraction <laughs> he he uh he would like to let our listeners know that it is indeed for the life of the device it is not a one year free trial do not worry do not sound the alarms we are okay folks yes we actually have a recording of uh, Shane's apology <gasps> that was him all right <laughs> not quite but yeah so uh that so that little wildfire snubbed out very very quickly good to hear yeah all right so 5g 2020 uh, that needs to come so much sooner mm -hmm. yeah well i can't wait for the day when when internet speeds are just so pedantic it's like like uh you never hear about oh well you know the power lines can transmit uh so many uh gigawatts of electricity at a time it's like no one cares because all of our needs are met in terms of electricity so it's it's you know why bother talking about it hmm. we still have to talk about that with with internet speed is because you know we can never get enough but one day probably after 2020 we'll but enough. one day internet speeds won't matter because you'll get as much data as you could possibly ever need over wireless over wired over whatever connection and it won't matter because you'll get it all <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to. All right. So with nothing else on that, this one had has been uh, sweeping across the internet. It was uh, it, it was it, it kind of showed Google on uh, acid, I guess would really? be a good way to put it. Uh -huh. And this is uh, and the particular article that I'm gonna you know that we're kind of pulling from is from uh, popsci.com, you know, popular science. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dave uh, Gershborn is uh is writing this one and if you haven't checked this out definitely go look uh, definitely go look it up because it's very very cool uh these are what the google artificial intelligence dreams look like and they're about as weird as electric sheep yeah, even more weird i think really yeah so these things are like the original is is an image of a tree on a giant uh, on a giant background, uh, you know, mountains in the distance, grass in the foreground, blah blah blah, all in a shade of red. And these images that you can go see and pull up, they're so freaky because uh, Google's image recognition software, like whenever you you take an image and you you know and you use Google search and it says you know find images related to this one or close to this one or what have you. This is what it's actually doing. It's overlaying other pictures uh, to the original and, and seeing what matches up. So it, in this one, you can see like, you know, cows and buffalo and fish and people on motorcycles and cars and buses and buildings and birds and just bunch. Of, and, and, and by the way, it all looks like someone took acid and drew this thing. Like it is just freaking some of these are actually quite pretty though uh, oh yeah no no it, it's a uh, uh, artwork like uh th there's one here of the of, it looks like a pagoda you know a red pagoda on blue background was gorgeous and also uh this one right beneath it uh uh pull patterns out of white noise um yeah it, like uh they, they have one with fish some with bananas measuring cups uh, uh, uh hard beast 
Yeah, yeah the ones that are further down. Go for even further. But there's yeah. two large Let's ones. See. Let's go further yeah. down even more. Oh. Yeah. You see, they're really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes an original image and then it starts overlaying a bunch of different images over it. And that's what gets you, you know, images like this in the search results. Go for it. It, 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 tries, it tries to match what, yeah. uh, you know, just if anything matches up, it'll it'll return that result. I look, those last two look really yeah, nice. Yeah. It's, it's psychedelic to put it, I'd put you know. I put that up on my wall. Yeah. No, it, it's psychedelic to say the least, but. It's all an algorithm. It's all a computer trying to, it is all machine learning trying to put some kind of order and some kind of search term to a visual image. Hmm. And this is what it ends up with something that looks like a bad drug trip <laughs> met, met, met a canvas. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. This, no, these images are even beyond that. They look like a bad drug trip is on a bad drug trip met a bad drug trip and then <laughs> painted that while okay. on yet another bad drug trip like, like the, these things are just insane it's a lot of bad drug trips in yeah there. all right exactly. it's a long trip well getting off that bad drug trip uh, again sticking with popular science uh this is actually kind of interesting uh by kelsey atherton uh evidently they're saying you know when you go to the airport you know in the, in the tsa agents you go all that stuff and they're trying to you know capture bad guys and Evidently, the face scanning robots could replace airport ticket agents. Uh, so, uh, now on display at this week's Paris Air Show was a set of terrestrial guards, uh, shiny white plastic and mechanical. These new machines will scan faces and read documents, offering all the human warmth of an airport check in clerk for a, a red eye flight. They'll also work as immigration officers because nothing says welcome to a new company like a robot. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the, the, the comparing it sort of like at the self checkout line at the grocery counter. But basically, the robots are going to save on labor, uh, each one doing the work of five human ticket agents. Uh, uh, they'll share scans of passengers' faces, uh, while other computers around the airport that, with other computers, then it prints the passenger's face on boarding pass somehow in an encrypted form. And gate agents can then check the scan, confirming that the person the robot saw is, in fact, the person. They're letting on the plane. Um, now, it may seem weird for a biometric machine to dominate this much of the passenger experience, but let's face it, these machines could be preferable to human interactions. I think these would be far more reliable. Uh, you know, um, they, 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 they could maybe teach it to be nicer to people. Maybe they could do that. But. Yeah, because you definitely can't teach that to, to people. But no, <laughs> the, the, the thing, like, this might be also in terms of security mm -hmm. like i'm not the biggest advocate of, of security in airports I, I i believe uh most places one goes in, in one's life are completely safe and harmless and uh airports get a pretty bad rap but hey it is what it is but this would be in terms of security because this will keep people from having to be you know pulled over and checked and you know and, and questioned who are you because they'll take your they'll take your face uh, scan at the front desk and then as you move throughout the airport as you go about the, you know go about your day mm -hmm. cameras all over the airport are going to keep picking you up like they're they're going to know exactly where you went how long you were there where you're going from like just walking around cameras are going to pick up your face and they're going to say okay well he was at exactly this location at 632 uh in 53 seconds and then he was here at 632 and 59 seconds like they're going to pick you up and track you by your face scan throughout your entire day in the airport and it's all about the security i mean that's that's what they're basically well doing. security and just like they said save on labor as well because uh you know you're not going to need uh as many security officers like well, standing around looking for people exactly because he's going to do a much better job and uh, and and we're all for doing a much better job. Uh, be, uh, they're going to be much more proficient. But that's not to say we won't need uh, people to do other other things. But I think for spotting or finding, you know, uh, uh, when, when when one of these robots looks at you, uh, as opposed to a human looking at you, the human looks at you. He doesn't know what your history of past is. Those robots can look at you. They'll know everything about your past if you're, you know, uh, at any well, ties to terrorists. No, 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 no. It's not going to know any of that. It isn't. It's not going to know any of that. 
what what this is going to know is it's going to know okay this person checked in for a flight at so and so hour mm-hmm. it, it uh, say uh, okay this guy checked out for encounter he has a flight in two hours mm-hmm. and he went to krispy kreme he went to sabaro he just ate food all over the place went to the bathroom about three times and then he got on his flight they're going to know everything you were doing at your time in the airport and that's going to be different than let's say uh you know security officer bob is is standing there you know right after the security checkpoint that's his first and last time he's probably going to see you because he's standing at one point in that airport looking at all the people and he doesn't know what flight they're taking or you know or what they're doing there Mm -hmm. these you know these systems that start at the front counter and scan your face they're going to know exactly why you're there where you're supposed to be and i'm sure at some point if there is you know let's say he, you know so and so left you know uh, had two carry on and mm-hmm. he's getting on the plane with one carry on i'm sure got- that's going to start setting off alarms i'm sure if he has a flight at 5 but they see him walking you know walking into a store at 5:30 that's going to start setting alarms like it, it, it's going to it's going to track you yeah, it, the it could, entire time. But it, it, but it's not going to know like your criminal history no, and, but, and, and your first date. Like it's not going to know all that. But 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 it can lead to uh, a more secure environment. You know when th- when anomalies like that uh, crop up, which couldn't be done with just with human beings, by the fact that they're tracking you at the airport. You know, so it's it's going to be a much different experience. Hopefully, it will be a, it will be an experience where. Uh, personally where contact with uh with people is at a minimum like not just like not really people people like i you know i enjoy people on occasion but people in terms of hey what are you doing why are you here uh you know where are you going what like people questioning what you're doing hopefully it'll lead to a reduction in that and it leaves you know other options open Hmm. well um what the what are those other options though we we won't know well no the the, the other option you know uh so you know let's say you only talk to uh you know the, the lady behind the counter at your ticket you know at, at your you know boarding destination and then maybe the the lady serving you coffee and then like it takes the security and makes it much much safer but keeps it out of the mind's eye because it's just going to be tracking you using yeah. cameras they're not going to be in your face, putting your hand on your chest and saying, hey, okay. wait, what are you doing here? All right. Fair enough. Okay. Um, you think it's a good thing? It could be. Okay. It, it could be. Um, you know, no, no sense in saying that it can't turn into something like you were saying earlier, where once they have your face scan, mm-hmm. they can, you know, kind of say, Okay, well, let's compare it with base scans we've taken earlier, and you all of a sudden match, a, you know, someone on the no fly list, mm-hmm. like that's, uh, you know, that's gonna get flagged as well. So, all it's, right. uh, it's just one more step to a, you know, more automated dystopian future. But, hey, you know, it's France. What are you gonna do? And listen, I just want to get this quick story, and it's important. It just came out today. Uh, just announced from Ars Technica. If you, if you get any, you can get. If you buy an Xbox One, you can get any Xbox One game free when you buy it. It's just announced today. Uh, yeah. This was E3 announcements. New games, backward compatibility with some uh, old games, and a fancy new controller coming later this year weren't enough to convince you to buy an Xbox One. Well, guess what? They're doing a latest promotion to swing the deal. From June 21st to June 27th, that's basically next week, anyone buying an Xbox One from participating U.S. retailers will get any game of their choosing for free. The only proviso is that the game must cost $59.99 or less and must be on optical media. That's right. The, the, uh, this offer even covers the brand new $399 one terabyte Xbox One that includes a 3.5 millimeter headset jack on its controller and already comes bundled with Halo, the Master Chief collection. So, okay, just thought we would mention that to you. If you're thinking about getting an Xbox One next week, um, now might be the time to do it because you get a free Xbox game. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up the show. We've got the weekend coming up. Uh, hopefully, some of you have some big weekend plans. Uh, you know, again, I want to thank Netgear uh, for being with us uh, on the uh, in the first hour show, actually staying a little bit over. Uh, uh, Oleg Fischel, who was the senior product line manager for Netgear, stayed with us for an extra few minutes, and, uh, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, coming up 
on uh, Monday, we're going to have in the first hour a company called I Love. Okay, and they this is interesting. They they make all kinds of interesting gadgets and things for that are technology oriented, like the Smart Shaker. This is a wireless alarm controlled by your smartphone that vibrates. They've got things called the MySight, which is a Wi-Fi cloud-based video camera for home and business. Some of the things that they have. Uh, they're going to talk about their Rainbow 7 90 smartphone controlled Bluetooth multicolor LED light bulbs. And these are some of the things that they have here. they got a whole bunch of stuff uh, to talk about. And they're going to be with us in the first hour. And then in the second hour, Expedia is going to be here with us. That's right. The travel people, Expedia, are going to be here. Uh, talking about some of the new services that they're getting ready to introduce uh, in the coming weeks ahead. So if you're doing traveling, uh, this is certainly going to be of interest to you as Expedia announces 60 seconds. some of their uh, stuff. And of course, uh, uh, remember we had DreamCheaper.com? Maybe you work you know, with that and some of the new features and, and use DreamCheaper, you can get really inexpensive hotels. Uh, very, very simply, too. Yeah, exactly. Again, that about wraps up the show. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a great weekend. And uh, Ben and I will uh, see you on Monday night. Same time, same bat channel with I Love in the first hour and then Expedia.com in the second hour. And, of course, we have time. We'll have computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software. So until Monday night, this is Craig Crossman. Hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. We'll see you Monday night. Ten seconds. What's floppy? <laughs>